So in the course of the scientific study on the effect of meditation, I also came to meet another neuroscientist called Tanya Singer. She's a uh, German scientist, and she's one of the world specialists of empathy. Empathy is the faculty to resonate with others' feelings. If someone comes with a big smile, oh, you start smiling. If someone suffers, you feel some of the suffering. And it turns out, if you study the brain, that empathy with suffering, for instance, if you really empathize with someone who is suffering, the area that registers suffering in the brain is activated in the same way, in the same area that the person who is suffering. So it is real suffering. What happens? If you are a caregiver, whether a nurse, a doctor, taking care of ailing patients, of your old elderly parents, if you constantly resonate with them, it's a challenge. It's a, it's, it can be a kind of a burden. And if a nurse, for instance, the patient might cure or die, but he's not going to be usually sick for 20 years. But if for 20 years you have day after day to suffer with the patient, then understandably, sometimes too much. It's called the burnout. Some people call compassion fatigue. Or some people, they say, oh, they have to, I have to warn myself. I cannot be so emotional, so I have to distance myself, which is not also very good, because a caregiver should be with the patient. So what is the solution? So we thought of that with Tanya Singer, and we tried to unpack the different elements of compassion. So I went myself in the scanner, and uh, Tanya said, just try to resonate on the suffering without your compassion meditation. And he did that for two hours in the scanner. And within two hours, I just completely burned out. I was imagining I had seen a documentary on terrible situation in orphanages in Romania with kids who were so weak that even moving something, they'll break their, their bones. And I seen that the night before. So I was filled with that and I really resonated. And two hours was unbearable. Normally, when you do that in meditation, you bring compassion right away. So I was holding it. And then at the end, she said, well, we could do the compassion meditation in the afternoon, or we could do it now. I said, please, let's do it now. I can't stand it anymore. So like, I felt like when I brought the compassion component, it was like opening of a dam. I felt that every atom of suffering now soaked with atom of loving kindness instead of feeling Incomfortable, not only not knowing how to handle that suffering, it's been like embracing. Uh, completely different, and in the brain also, complete change. Many areas that has to do with empathy, distress, with fear, with pain, were gone, and we could see the perception of other suffering, but with a lot of wholesome feelings at the same time. So we got the idea together that. There's no such thing as compassion fatigue, but only empathy fatigue. And that stand alone empathy, just empathy, empathy, leads to burnout. But if you have empathy within the vaster sphere of loving kindness and compassion, then you have the whole buffer of you know, this compassion that prevents all the negative effect of feeling the other suffering. And I think that's a tremendous potential you know, tra helping caregivers to train in arousing more of that loving kindness. And you see some nurses who are naturally very, very, you know, motherly and, and affectionate, and usually they don't burn out because they have these resources of compassion, that pool of compassion, but that can be trained. And the other studies on meditation and neuroscience have shown that those qualities can be trained. So I think this is a wonderful way that possibly we could Meditation could contribute something to society in collaboration with science.